Oh man, that looks like it there. That's probably. <laughs> that looks like it. See, you know, I'm a country boy, so hey, I didn't know nothing about no studio uh, drums. You know, I didn't know anything about that. And so when I came to California and I was blessed to get in the studios and, you know, you learn how to get the drum sounds and get the rings and stuff out of, well, hey, you know, I didn't know nothing about that. So let it ring, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Rest yourself. How did you learn to just watching you out there just whack the drum with a lug, with a tuning lug, and then just keep it going till like oh there's some ring, okay keep going oh there's more ring. I've just never seen that approach before. I, it's just something that uh, I acquired, I guess, just from my ear. You know? No one ever taught you the trick. You just sort of picked it up on your no, own. No, I mean. Now they had a, what they did was when I start, first started working at Motown, they would have me to come in at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, engineers, and tune up my drums. Uh, but it was a different way. Right. You know, that is like a, I get a bastardized tuning the way I would do it. I just tune it up to where I thought I could get that pop. And a lot of times it was time too, like I might not have had it time to do a lot of stuff and a lot of us you know mostly for live you know it was not for recording a lot of times it was mostly for live mm -hmm. you know get that so that's why you know I did it like that you know for, for me and then uh, you know I would hear a lot of the records were mono and, and you would hear that um, they didn't make records as well as they're making them now right and James Brown's snare was, was, would ring so you know I thought that it, you know, that was what was, was, you know, happening. So that's why I did it. That's cool. There we go. Yep. Hear that ring? Yep. You're not even... He's trying to tune the ring in. <laughs> okay. That kind of sound. What do you think? I think so. You know, so if the if the snare might have been tuned a little low, I would tune it up and get that pop. We would call it get that pop. That's what we would call it. Okay. That pop. So that's what that's the way it was. You know, because it would just cut through. You get that pop. You know, get that pop. Hit it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> It was an eight track, plus they had two tracks. And they were started some kind of way from what I hear, because I would be out in the 
in the studio, but they tell me that they would start the eight track and start the two track later on to catch up with it. And then they would count you off, you know, and we would play. Huh. You know. Huh. That's just like the perfect drum in any scenario, any situation. If you had a a superphonic, you could just you can pretty much you can do any genre because the drum can tune to wherever you want it to go. It's just like that workhorse, all around, amazing. It does low and thud disco, and then you can crank it up and do some jazz or rock with it, right. depending on what you want to do. A lot of disco and stuff. But I tuned, it was tuned down. I mean, way down. Uh, I don't want to mess. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the tension rods were, they were, some of them would fall out, fall off, you know. Because, you know, they would, the, uh, well, the snare, both heads were on the snare, but during that time, the kick and the uh, palms, the bottom heads were off. Yep. And so they had a certain uh, way that they recorded. And uh, the disco thing, I think they wanted the snare to have that that punch. So it, did, it wasn't about, it was about the depth, I guess, in it. Because they used, it had the big speakers they were using in New York uh -huh. when they turned, you know. So this was down very low. What about there? Something like that. There's something like that. And I'll take the snare off. That's it, man. Yeah, he just said, keep, you know, bring it down, bring it down. I just brought it down and, and I had the tape on it and I even brought the bottom heads down. So, I mean, um, seriously, he has this tension rods hanging, you know, but they wanted that thump. I mean, whoever was recording it. And so you didn't hear it's a snare sound. You, you heard the, yeah. you know, you heard the attack. Yeah. Yeah, I was able to use that on a lot of different different types of uh, sessions, you know, for different songs, you know, just tight, a little twitch sometimes. It was just great. It was a great drum, all around drum. Yeah. Gosh, man. James would only bring, he, you had, if I, if I remember, you whole big thing of snares. Yeah, but you, you had three Jupiters in there, maybe two were fives and one right. was a six and a half. And then right. one of them, he- Put Beck written on it. He hit in pen, he had Beck written on them. So he knew that was the drum. Right. Because he never changed his heads. Right. <laughs> That's right. Because <laughs> we did a session years, Post this record, he and I, it might have been on uh, for uh, 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 morning phase. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, is that, the, is that your normal Jupiter snare? And you, you, you pull it up, you should see, it says Beck <laughs> right there. <laughs> and I was right. like, oh, okay, that's, I guess that's it, yeah. sweet. I mean, and the thing about Beck, I mean, you never know what, 
I mean, he's, he's so adventurous. That's what, that was really what I always dug about him. You never know what you were going to play. I mean, you, mm. he would take you to the limits a lot of time. And so I really, uh, I really enjoyed that, you know, and some of the musicians that he would bring in, he brought in some great musicians, you know, so it was, it was a great time. We tried a lot of different things, they tried a lot of different things, and I was in a, and man, you talking about sweat, perspiring and sweating, they had me in a room, <laughs> they could barely get the drums in there, you know. And man, I had to, about every 25 or 30 minutes, they had to open the door for me to come out of there because it was pretty hot. You know. Whatever you do, 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 do it good. It's not. See, the thing about drums is I didn't start playing until I was 21. Okay. So, like, I wasn't really into drums. Right. I was a doo-wop cat. You right. know, I thought I was going to be, a, you know. <laughs> okay. I really wasn't into those drums. What happened was when I got out of the Air Force, my brother had a band, and I didn't know it. And so, But he said, well, hey, man, come on and join the band. And so the bass player left the group. And the drummer could play bass and he didn't want to play drums anymore. So, you know, I learned, you know, that's how, that's how it came about. Was that cool? James, that was a 